Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big ol' hello to you new subscribers, thank you for stopping in and joining us. Um, we are going to get back on the 2004 Johnson two-stroke 30 horse. And uh, we're going to give it a makeover, turn it into electric start, pull start, charge your battery, yada, 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 and so forth and so on. May do some other things yet, ain't sure. I've got a 19 and 89, I think, 88, 89 donor motor that we'll be taking many of the parts off of. It has internal issues. But the first thing I have to do is apologize. I need to apologize to you guys. I am sorry. Um, <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't always look at my videos when I upload them. I sometimes go back and look at them when I have a comment or something that I knew I needed to reply to. And that's what I did on my last video, or second to the last video, I can't remember. But I went and looked at it and I went, what in the world is going on there? The, the video quality was horrid and I am sorry for that. Um, What I like to do when I'm going to give one of these things a bath is I cover all the mag plate and electronics with a plastic bag. Then I like to take a rag and hose it down with some lubricant and just stick it in that intake hole really good. And then hose that down with a little lubricant. Now on this guy here, I'm just going to lather it up good and get my little brush and just, now that I got that old cob rape off there and stuff, I can get all this dirt access to it now. I put the plugs, help, got to put Sparky candles back in there, don't we? Don't want to fill the cylinders full of soap and water. So I put them back in. So we get some soap all in and around this head, too. Now I don't worry too much with the, the coils and power pack. Um, they're sealed pretty good. I mean, I don't sit there and hose them, try to hose them directly with the hose, but um, a little bit of water ain't going to hurt them at all if you blow them off with air and let them dry good. Yeah, on a stance. Okay. Now, get our soapy soap soap. Ooh, look at that dirt. Might as well put some all over the handle and everything too. Do, 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 do. I don't like working on old dirty motor. found that other tin cup that goes to the recoil mount. Okay. Now let me get my Get my little brushy. Let's start getting everything slathered up. 
It's actually pretty dirty. Dirtier than I thought it was at first. But we get this old super cleanius on there and it'll look a hundred cent better. This old black stuff around the edges. So I don't I ain't gonna make you sit here and watch me slather, but that's what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then we'll rinse it off. We'll let that sit for about oh, at least five minutes and then I'll hose her off.
Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm taking off these two little 5 16 bolts so that I can lean this riser here up and get it this 3 8 inch bolt that holds the solenoid on. Um, so I can get it getting the starter off this thing. Um, there's a bolt that comes in from the front, uh, excuse me, a nut on a stud that's 7 16 and then you got this one right here that's 7 16 and then to get these little 5 16 bolts that hold the clip that holds the riser I take a uh, nut driver 5 16 and I don't know hopefully it's showing up see how thin walled that is I took it to my grinder and grind ground that off because they don't give you much room to get in there um, if it's fat walled it'll it'll hit right there but if you got a thin walled socket that'll work um, but I've got a lot of these nut drivers in their cheap 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 so I can do that and get at that and then get the clip and all that enough out of my way where'd you go well I don't really care there it is but now I can get my re-ancient wrench and all I'm trying to do with this is loosen it a little so I can pull the solenoid out of my way there we go yeah okay, that's probably enough right there well maybe one or two more A little bit more. Let's try the open end on this thing. Move this out of my way as much as possible. There, that's where I need that. And then get that guy loosened up. And then I might have to pry it a little. I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to get it loose anyway. There. That should do it. It's wiggling out of there. There we go. Okay. Okay. And do 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 do. So that's gonna be that guy, I think, holding us in there. Let's see. Let's see. That's just holding the ground wire. From the battery terminals. Ooh. What size is that? Aren't you? That's a three eighths, I guess. Of course. Okay. Yeah, that feels better. And I already took out the nut on the front and the other bolt. What else is holding it? Let's see, we got this out of our way. That's out of our way. And, oh. Is that it? No. Well, must be. Must be that guy right there. What size is that? What size is it? It looks like a 716. That's what it looks like. Now, let's find out. The other way, the other way. I thought this was just a ground. Nope, it's not. That's the one that's got to come out. So it goes in that way. Just like them solenoid bolts that hold the solenoid they go up into this bracket okay they get me a screwdriver to hold some pressure on it it's coming out it's coming out of there it's loose. Get my fat fingers. 
my old fat feeners in there. My fat fillers. I can get this thing out. Sometimes you got to get all contorted. You got contortionist to get that bolt out of there. Did we get it? Did we get it again? Don't lose my little star washer. Let's see. Okay, we already got you loose. I think it just needs wiggling and such to get off that stud that's in the front that sticks right down in there. It's kind of tight. Yeah, let me get this carbor reaper hose out my way. There. And where we at? Where we at? I don't want to tap on my star if I don't have to. It moved that time. It came some that time. I see it. I see it come around. I see it. I can get my rubber mallet, I guess. But wouldn't hoist nothing. Wouldn't hoist it. It wouldn't hoist it. I think I'm just dealing with wires now and such. Yeah, I'm still hung on that stud. I can see there. There's the stud. Causes all the problems. And we go. There's my starter solenoids, and noids, and noids. Now, what's the best way to deal with all that? We got the off start switch and such. But hmm, they are. Whoa, whoa! Oh, don't do that. Okay, we got to get this off of here. Oh, that one's on her tight. Alright, to the screwdriver. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Just so tight up in there. Let's see. There, there. So, all these wires go right to here. You understand? What size is that? About a half. It is. Put it, put it, put it, put it, put There's my wire. There's my starter. There's my switch. Drop my little star washer. Okay, and then we got that one that goes to the other side, to the, what I call S1. Oh, where's that star washer? There it is. You know where it was? It was right there on the floor where I left it, where I dropped it. Get on there now. That ain't the one that come off there, is it? Nope, that's the one that came off the other piece. Yeah, let's try not to lose the nut. Wait. Come on, would ya? Those are three eighths, I think they are. Oh, that's three eighths. Where are my three eighths? Here's my little bitty teeny lock washer. I've lost every other one that I've... Ba -ba -ba. Ah. Let's see, we got it going there. There. So I gotta take that off yet. There's just so much I got to take off. Tip, okay, we got the red, we gotta get that guy. Put them back on so I don't lose them. And a little washer. Got 
this old rubber stuff on it just makes it hard. Makes it real hard. Just don't lose it. Okay. But that other one can stay hooked to the starter. Don't lose the washer. Don't lose the washer. There's... I didn't lose it. I got it. I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I thought it. Now I dropped the nut. I'm just a bumly feeners today. Just a bumly feeners. I need to cut back on my coffee. It's starting to shake. Too much caffeine. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, where'd you come from? Let's go. The other nut back on this solenoid, what I don't want to lose. I don't know if you guys can hear it on camera, but it's blowing about 45 knots out there. All right, now we'll get this off later. And I'll use these same terminals and all. But. <laughs> the thing that I'm after. Is that raper. I'm after that raper. Now how do you think this would do? This is. If I remember right. I'll look just a second. If it's still on there, this thing. So, I'll tell you what else, the motor mounts are all gone on this motor, too. This one here, they're all broke. Did they're all broke? Did it shake bad? I told that to the owner before it started having cylinder issues. I said, Man, your motor mounts. Oh, guns. Gonzo. They're gonzo. Got no left. Who can do it? You can do it. And I get the nut. I get the nut. I'll take that little gasket too. It's uh, a little crinkle, but it's still pretty good. Let's go ahead and put them on. If I need them, I know where they're at. I know where I left for them. That's good. There's that big star washer. I stepped right on it. I got it. Cause it's all about the parts, about the parts. All right. Now I think what I'm gonna do here, and I'm gonna show you the tool I use for it. There's none better for cutting these fuel hoses. I caught them good. I, man, they won't even stand a chance with me. Cause this is a razor blade. That's right, it's a razor blade. Works good. That's what you want to use for cutting these nice and crisp and, and nice and clean. See, I do a good job. Now, I don't think, let me see if I can find a welch plug, because I don't think this thing 
Yeah, he... I'll show you. There's nothing left on as far as decals and such go. You see what's left where the decal would have been? There's nothing there but fizzle, whizzle, whizzle, you know, crusty, rusty, yucky, milky white powder. Nothing there. And let me look on the other side. Let me look on the other side. I think it's the same way though. Ooh, it's even worse. <laughs> there's nothing there but aluminum. So let's see if we got a plug. Oh, there's one. There's a pluggy. So you can get the number off of these plugs. See that plug right there? Right in there's a plug. Let me see if I can see what it say. What it say? C C E. So is that 89? I N T R O D U C E. 9. I N T R O D U C. So this is a 19 and 89. But that don't tell me what I want to know. It says I can't see it. I think it says 30. I thought this one I could have sworn it was a 35. I don't know what's making me think that, but no, it's a 30. J30 T E L C C E. So it is a 30. Well, then, now. Interesting. And what and you say, what 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 what's interesting? Well now. What's interesting about that? You understand? So you got to give me your opine on it. Two thousand four plastic. Two thousand four. Nineteen and eighty nine. Not plastic. Both 30 horses. Huh. Well. They both take the primer, not a flapper choke. They both have that kind of linkage. 8904 What do you think? I'm going to clean them both anyway, but would you think this is the better of the car? Plastic? No plastic. Hmm. Now that's a thought, huh? Huh. So both of them, I think, will fit right on either motor. And like I said, I'm going to clean both of them anyway. So, where does it end? Where does it end? No, no, I don't know. There was something else I wanted to print out. Oh, yeah, that's what I know what it is. I know what it is. Do you remember? Oh, I don't know. Two, three, more than that. I don't know. Six videos ago. I told you. I was work. I can't, what was I working on? Yeah, I was working on the 70 three-cylinder two-stroke Mercury with VRO. And I had to do some stuff around the intake on it. And I put a little sealer on a gasket that was on this side, on the carburetor side of the intake cover for that motor. 
And I told you the manual say, no, 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 no. If it's from the reed valves or the intake forward to the carburetor, you don't use sealer. That's what the manuals say. Except for one, there was one exception to that that I could find. And uh, and I told you guys, I ain't gonna tell you. Y'all gotta guess. And a few people weighed in and they said it was on the threads of the nipples and stuff. Now on that, I suppose you could do, I know you can do, if you use the Teflon tape on the threads, use the yellow. They make that stuff. I got some right around here somewhere. But you're supposed to, if you're going to use it around gasoline for the Teflon, you get the gasoline impervious yellow um, tape the, uh, for the threads. So, you're supposed to use the yellow on that. So I suppose that is a sealer and that, so that would be one more exception. And I think they did mention, I've seen that in a manual before where they said if you're going to use that Teflon tape, use the Teflon impervious to gas yellow colored, especially for it. And I have some of that. But the only place I could find in a manual that said use an actual sealer, something you squeeze out of a tube, so to speak, or paint on, that kind of thing, was right there. And this one has it on it, too. The Welch plugs, the upper transition chamber. When you put that lead plug in there, they recommend you take some OMC blah 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 special sealer and put right around there. I I have used and I have seen used. I have seen JB Weld around here. I have seen what I believe is fingernail polish around here. Now after that bath, don't that thing look a lot better? Don't that look much more better? She cleaned right up. Looked like it's ready to go to church almost. Little paint missing here and there after I hit it with the water, but overall it came out pretty clean, pretty nice. So, yeah, little elbow grease, little super clean soap and water and ta-da. Now, I took the, what do you call that thing, rectifier off of the 89 motor and it'll go right here here's my wires and I put all the hardware that's going to hold the rectifier there I did not change out this bracket I just took the rectifier off the other motor and put all the hardware that holds it into this bracket all the bossing was the same so that should work out and uh, now what I'm thinking about doing is getting the Kaba Repa all squared away, cleaned up, and then putting the car back on, hooking things temporarily up, put that flywheel on here, the one off the 88 or 89 or that one that has Tephasis for the starter. Go ahead and put that on here, that flywheel, torque it down and start the motor manually with the manual recoil and just see if that flywheel is going to run this thing. It fits and I get spark, but I just want to make sure before I go putting all this starter and wires and kill switches and rectifiers and yada, 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 that this thing is going to actually run with that flywheel. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. I'll think about it. I'll be back.
Bye bye, dear. Okay, so here's the 2004 Cobbs Reaper. Pretty clean in there. Yeah. Ooh. Get a flash of that. I think I see something down there in that. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that. But if you look down in the high chamber there, there is a big old blob of yuck in there. Okay, I got the uh, the 2004 carb all cleaned up, and she's looking really good. Got her nice and clean. Got the bowl all cleaned up. Got that crap that was down in there out of there. Um, so we're gonna get this back together and. Then I'll think of my next step. Yeah, so let me get this one back together. I still got to clean this one over here, the 89. I'll be back. Okay, so what I did here is I put the original to this engine carburetor back on after I cleaned it up real good. Then I've got the tooth flywheel off the 89 on. Then I put, went out to my bone pile, and I got a recoil start that had the long legs here. Hey, I left my socket. And I put it on there, and it seems like it's going to work. So I've got everything cleaned up. You can see there's my rectifier wires coming out from under the uh, flywheel, and they got plugs on the end of them there. So, And then I just got my screws and bolts in that bracket. So what I think I'm going to do before I start putting the electric start solenoid and all that stuff on is I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing in my tank and see if it will run with that flywheel on there from the 89 and that's what I decided I'm going to try noisy sucker. Uh, she might smoke a little more than normal because I have triflow all in that carburetor. But I will show you. It's kind of chilly in my shop today. I even got, uh, but here's my digital And I will show you. There's the exhaust port. 44 degrees. Here's back here by the top of the cylinder. 44 degrees. Like I said, it's fairly chilly. 45 degrees. So that is a cold engine. Now I've got the gas hooked up, but I haven't pumped it in yet. So, let's see. Feels like she's filling up a carburetor bowl to me. <laughs> Flaky paint. Okay, she's got a good tight bulb on her. I'm going to have to turn on this noise sucker. So, let's give her a couple of primies. That worked good. Or if it's gonna break my arm.
suck a little bit of that out of here. say it will run 1990 or 18, 1989 flywheel. We'll run that in. Oh. <laughs> now I'll show you. Get my heat gun again. Sixty-nine. I only ran it a little though. Let's see what it's doing back here. Eighty-seven. So that water in my tank is very cold too. It's only forty degrees. So now that we've got the uh, flywheel. Recoil start. All figured out and it will work. Now we will take all this off and put the electric start on it. And then we will also put on the rectifier. Little bitty steps coming along. Well, um, looks like the tooth, toothed, teethiness, teethis, toothed flywheel is going to work just fine on this thing. And uh, so, yes, we have, I think solved that part of the equation. Will the heavier toothed flywheel off an 89 fit on a 2004 30 to allow you to then put the electric starter solenoid switch and everything on and make a 2004 an electric start because the flywheel on the 2004 and the recoil on the 2004 will not allow for electric starting. You have to get the tooth flywheel which is bigger and heavier and thicker. And I would think this is off an 89. And so I'm thinking 89 on up, if it had a starting system on it, would probably work. But you need both the recoil and the toothed flywheel because the recoil starter that came with the 2004 was, had shorter legs for the bolts. To hold it on so now I know I've got a recoil that'll work and I've got a flywheel that'll work and the engine will run so now we will take the next step and go to the um, putting the electric start and charge system on I just wanted to try this because I didn't think it would be 
you know, I'd, I'd hate to get all that wiring done and everything to find out that the, the uh, flywheel, even though it had spark, wouldn't for whatever run the engine because of timing issues or whatever. Uh, and then there's also this carburetor seems fine on here. But I got a little bit of hankering to try this 89 car because it's all aluminum and everything, whereas that one has the plastic top. I still have not cleaned this one yet. It's next. But the reason why it's important, it's important, and I need to paint it out, is because to put on or off a carburetor on this motor you have to remove the electric starting system or you can't get to the right hand carburetor nut so I want to clean this rapa up and get it on there and give it a, a test run now keep in mind we, we can't do wide open throttle or nothing here we can only do what I can do in the in the tank um, but I think I will before I start on the electric start portion because of that right hand carburetor nut I will go ahead clean this carb up and get it on there and give that carb a test um, so I'm gonna do that and that's gonna be in the next video because this video is getting a little long and uh, I want to wrap it up. So, as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.